Hello and welcome to video 4 in this mini crash course on the basics of music theory. In this video we'll be going through key signatures, parallel and relative keys, and harmonic keys and the circle of fifths. So let's get started. Firstly, what is a key signature? A key signature tells you how many notes in a scale are sharp and flat. The image shows how many sharps and flats are in each major scale, but it doesn't tell you which notes are flat or sharp in a scale. Here we use a mnemonic to make remembering these flat and sharp notes easier. For adding sharps to a key signature, we have the mnemonic Father Charles goes down and ends battle. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, then B sharp. This means that G major would have one sharp, which would be F sharp. D major would have two, which would be F sharp and C sharp. A major would have three, F sharp, C sharp and G sharp, and so on. And you can do the same with adding flat notes to a key signature. Battle ends and down goes Charles' father. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, and F flat. This means F major would have one flat, which would be B flat. B flat major would have two flats, which would be B flat and E flat. E flat major would have three flats, which is B flat, E flat, and A flat, and so on. So let's move on to key relationships. Here we have three sections, parallel, relative, and enharmonic keys. But let's start with parallel keys first. Now parallel keys are major and minor scales that have the same tonic note. This means they both contain the same note at the beginning of the scale. So here we have two examples, the major and minor scale starting at A. And we also have it starting at C as well. They both have the same tonic note. However, as we established in video three, with minor scales, they have a lowered third, sixth, and seventh degree to compared to major scales. So let's look at relative keys. Major and minor scales have a special relationship. Relative keys are major and minor scales that share the same key signature. This means that they both contain the same sharp or flat notes in their scale. And you can find the beginning of a minor scale by starting at the sixth note in a major scale. So here we have an example with A major. The sixth note in the scale is an F sharp. Therefore, F sharp is a relative minor key to A major. Both scales A major and F sharp minor contain the same notes, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp and G sharp. However, the minor scale starts at the sixth note instead. F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, and then E. Their key signature is three sharps. The C, the F, and the G, all three are sharp notes. So let's listen to the A major scale, followed by the F minor scale, which starts at the sixth degree. We also have C major. The sixth note in the scale is an A. Therefore, A is a relative minor to C. Their key signature is no sharps and no flats, as the scale only contains natural pitches. Now let's refer to enharmonic keys. 
Enharmonic keys are scales which contain the same notes but are labelled differently. An example would be the key signature of C sharp major and D flat major. C sharp major contains seven sharp notes and D flat major contains five flats. However, each note sounds the same when they're played or sung. So let's listen to both scales. How you phrase the key signature is ultimately down to you, but the composer uses a scale which is easier to translate to sheet music. So in the example, using D flat major is preferable because it only involves five note changes, the five flats, whereas C sharp major is changing all seven notes to sharps. However, there are a few other reasons why C sharp major may be preferable. For example, if you're playing in a key signature involving sharp notes, transitioning to C sharp major, which also involves sharp notes, will be easier for a musician. But also, the composer has to consider accidentals. Now, accidentals are notes which occur rarely but fall outside the scale you're using. For example, if you're using C major, which has no sharps or flats, but on the odd occasion you sneak in a C sharp in your music, the C sharp would be an accidental. So how do key signatures, parallel, relative, and enharmonic keys all fit in together? There's so much to remember, and this is where the circle of fifths comes in. The circle of fifths is a geometrical representation of the relationships between the 12 keys of music. It's a handy tool to help you remember relative keys and how many sharps or flats are in certain key signatures. It's also a really handy thing to print off and pin to your wall as well. The outer rings are your major keys along with how many sharps or flats present and the inner ring is the major keys relative natural minor. So here we have it. So when we start at the top we're at C major which has no sharps or flats and as we go around clockwise we add a sharp note each time we enter a new key. If we go anti-clockwise, we add a flat each time we enter a new key. Until we reach the bottom, where our enharmonic keys come in, which can be phrased as sharp or flats. On the inner ring are our major keys relative minors. So C major at the top, its relative minor is A. G major, its relative minor is E and so on. So what else can we use for the circle of fifths? Well firstly we can use it to find scales. It's also useful to tell you about the key you've chosen as well as we can work out the notes very easily. So if we start on the outer ring to find a major scale and we start on the inner ring to find a minor scale. So let's choose the key of B flat in a major scale. Therefore, we start on the outer ring. This is what we do. We select the five closest notes. So for the outer ring, it would be an E flat to the left and F to the right. On the inner ring, the G below, the C to the left and the D to the right. And for the last note, the seventh note, you use the inner circle going clockwise, which would give you the note A. So our B flat major scale is B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, and A. And as we can see, the B flat has two times B below it, which means the scale has two flat notes. And from our diagram, we can see that these flat notes are B flat and E flat. Now you can do the exact same thing for minor scales find the five closest notes and the seventh 
is the note on the inner circle going clockwise. So it's the exact same process. We can also find chord progressions. You can use a circle of fifths to build a chord progression. The most common chord progressions involve the first, the fourth, the fifth and the sixth notes in a major or minor scale. Our example is the key of A major along with the fourth, fifth and sixth notes. For major scales, our fifth chord is in front, our fourth chord is behind, and our sixth chord is our relative minor from the inner circle. Therefore, for A major, we have D, E and F sharp. For minor scales, we have our fifth chord also in front, our fourth chord is also behind, however our sixth chord is the opposite to the fourth chord on the outer circle. So for F sharp minor, we have B, C sharp and D. But don't worry too much if you don't understand the significance of chord progressions in the diagram, as it's our last topic on music theory that we cover. So that completes video four in this mini crash course on the basics of music theory. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, please give me a beautiful thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. And when you're ready, click on the next video in the series where we learn about chords, the basics, part one.